Hello ladies, I like to show you how I make my spikes and as you can see we only need four things. We need a sewing machine, very basic. We need some white thread because I like to use my white thread when I start paper piecing. I need my templates and of course I need the fabrics. First I'd like to explain you something about the template and as you can see we cut it a smidge on the outside. At the end, when we make the beautiful border, I can cut it exactly on the line. So for me, this is a very nice start. You also can see we have the little tiny arrows. They indicate the stitching direction. The numbers in the center indicate the stitching order. And these are my fabrics. So my fabric number one is already on top. Fabric 15 is my beautiful cobalt blue. Fabric 2 fabric 16 and so on. So all the fabrics are in the right order. Okay, I take the pile, I take my first two fabrics and always remember the first fabric for the first foundation point is always on top. Place the pieces exactly on top of each other. Right sides facing together. If this was a fabric with a silver star you are looking to the wrong side of the fabric and the right sides facing together. Take your template and the only thing you have to do focus on the line between 1 and 2. And You can see the little arrow so we will start here. I use a small stitch. It's a one and a half. It could be smaller but if we make a mistake, and believe me I do, I like to use my seam wrapper and if the stitch is too small, I'm not able to put the seam wrapper under the stitch and I will damage the paper or even will damage the fabric. I always start with a tiny back stitch. So and as you can see, I start with a tiny back stitch, I go all the way down over the line and I end up here at the end also in the seam allowance with the back stitch. If I turn the piece, you can see we do have a beautiful seam, about a quarter of an inch and the only thing I do now is finger press. I hold it between my two fingers and I use my thumbnail and I finger press. These are my first two steps. I leave the fabrics the way they are. Now I take my next yellow or foundation point three and I focus on the line between two and three. And again, you can see the little arrow. So I will start here with my back stitch, go all the way over the line and I will end up here with my back stitch. Focus on the right side of the piece. And you just put it on top of the piece. And when you do that, you almost turn the fabric and you can extend the line in your mind. You can see we do have a beautiful quarter of an inseam allowance here. And again, always start with that little tiny back stitch. So we start here with a tiny back stitch, we cross here exactly on that point, we go all the way down and we end up here with the back stitch. And now I just tear this a little bit and I fold the paper and now I will cut her. That is my first point. And as you can see, the pieces are quite big and there's a reason. Fabric is expensive, so I always make my pieces a little bit longer and a little bit wider so I can make two pieces from one piece of fabric and I don't have a lot of waste. There's number four, focus on the line between three and four. 
you can see the little arrows and again if you do that almost curl on your piece and if you do that extend in your mind that line and you can see there will be a beautiful quarter of an inch you do the same here extend this line in your mind see it's a little bit off but now you can see that if you do that you have a perfect quarter of an inch here and here so again you do that little tiny back stitch your back stitch all the way down to the end and you cross here just before you're at the line and you do your back stitch and now you tear this one here and again and there is the third point I love to use a big scissor with a big blade and that's my leftover pile and that's for my second border so I have no waste at all and again Spread it between your two fingers and use your thumbnail. Let's take another piece, right side of the piece. And that's how you make your border, point after point, fabric after fabric. And because everything is in the right order, your next pile for your next border is in the right order as well so be very careful with your leftover pieces because then you can finish your borders in no time if you have done that you will be very happy with the final result because you have no waste and you have a perfect border thank you so much for watching this video and you never know if you can take advantage of this technique as well